Hello and welcome to another episode of uh, Your Damn Jets. Uh, in this episode I'm going to talk uh, again about my uh, primary sinus lymphoma and I'm going to talk about the projects that I um, did while I was dealing with the lymphoma. Um, this is going to deal with things that I did while I was having visual symptoms but I didn't know that I had a lymphoma. Things that I did after they diagnosed me with MS but I didn't know that I had a lymphoma. Uh, things that I did after they diagnosed me with the lymphoma and I was going through chemo and those things that I did uh, after the stem cell transplant uh, and that I'm still recovering from. Um, so first of all the first big thing that I was doing while uh, I had the lymphoma was my master bathroom remodel. Um, and this was going on full speed until my attack on June 5th, 2020. Um, I was still able to do a lot of work. Um, even though I had visual symptoms, uh, I could see around the, the, the blobs or the, the static. So it was going full speed until June 5th. Then after June 5th, it slowed down. I, mean, I wouldn't say that I stopped completely at that point, but it was slowing down considerably. Um, let's see, in May 2020, I installed, in, in April and May 2020, I would say, I installed cameras outside the house um, just because I wanted to know what was going on around the house. Um, it didn't turn out to be as useful as I thought it would be. Primarily because the interface I'm using is not great and um, this is a theme that is going to come back again later uh, in this episode. Um, so yeah, I've installed cameras and they work but they get triggered by all kinds of things like shadows, light, <laughs> uh, mosquitoes. <laughs> It's a bit annoying. Um, I in May 2020 also I tried to repair our water heater. Um, I replaced the bottom element of the water heater because it was leaking. That was the problem. Was I w I, I noticed there was a leak. And normally what I would do with that I that I would check the the date of manufacturer of the water heater and that water heater was at the end of its life so normally what I would do is just replace the water heater either myself or have somebody come in and replace it um, I didn't do that this time because I was concerned about having workers in the house and the possibility of transmitting COVID so I first tried to replace the bottom element and it cost me a little bit of money and some elbow juice um, but you're gonna see later that that didn't work. Um, I had to eventually replace it because uh, it was still leaking. Uh, I replaced the element but that was not enough. Um, and the gasket was also replaced and no. At some point it just doesn't work. <laughs> so it didn't work. Um, in July 2020 I replace um, the well water valve. So we have well water and we have a valve to control when to fill the tank inside the house and when to stop filling the tank. And the valve was starting to do weird things and I decided to test the pressure in the pipes and I noticed that the valve was getting the line pressure way too high. It was dangerous. It was to the point where I was afraid that something would burst and we would have to have workers in the house. Um, and I was not feeling it at all, you know, in terms of doing the work. I didn't want to do the work. I, I, I was feeling like shit. Um, I remember clearly that replacement. I was feeling like, like shit. And, um, so what I did is that I ordered all the parts that I needed on at Home Depot and went with my wife and we got the parts and um, 
then I asked my wife to pretty much act act as a nurse while I was doing the repair. So she would hand me the tools that I needed and be by my side and give me, you know, everything I needed to to do the work. Um, and I managed to replace it. You know, we, we didn't have any disaster in the house. There was no leak, uh, and the valve replacement itself went well. Uh, I knew how to do it. It's just I didn't want to do it, and I was I, I was tired like hell that day. Uh, but I was more afraid of having to have workers come in the house than doing the work. So I did it. Uh, in October 2020, I installed a new shower valve in the guest bathroom, which we were using for our showers because the master bathroom, as we speak right now, is still not usable. Um, so I installed a little valve just under the shower head, and I needed that for myself. Uh, because I was in October, I was starting to to be weak and to need to sit down. And when I was taking showers, um, I remember the showers at the time were like, "Oh yeah, now I'm going to go take a shower." Buck up, kiddo, because it's going to be hard. Um, so I installed a valve to be able to turn off the jet and then turn it back on without without modifying the main controls because you can always go back to the main valve and turn it on and off but every time you do that you de-adjust the, the hot and cold so I wanted to have a valve that I could just turn uh, to stop the flow if I needed to stop the flow and then start it again the same month in October 2020 uh, my wife and I bought a car uh, our old car was was not doing very well um, and I decided that rather than have the risk that my wife would be on the highway and have the car just give up uh, we should just uh, get rid of it uh, so we started looking for another car and we did during the pandemic we had our masks on and we drove we test drove a bunch of cars until we landed on what we wanted we bought the Hyundai Ionic plug-in hybrid uh, electric car so we could plug it in at home and it would have 29 miles of battery to go around and after the battery was exhausted it would kick in the gas engine and start using gas and at some point we were going to when we were doing multiple trips to Baltimore we were able to hit 75 miles per gallon which we thought was pretty nice uh, because our previous car was doing four, 40 miles per, per gallon. It was a little bit better at the start, but by the time we got rid of it, it was around 40 miles per gallon. So 75 miles per gallon was nice. Um, then in May 2021, I had installed, I had already installed previously the valve on the shower head in the guest bathroom, but in, in uh, May 2021, I decided that the shower head was just too crappy and I replaced it with a new shower head. So the valve basically became redundant <laughs> at that point. Um, I removed it. I removed the valve and I put a new shower head there. Uh, that you, We can turn it off. The shower head has an in function in it to turn it off if we want to turn it off. And we have multiple jets also, uh, which is much nicer than the previous shower head, which was just one jet and could not be turned off until I added the valve. Um, and I should say, May, in May 2021, I was I was done with chemo uh, by that time. Uh, you're going to, I'm going to talk about it in other episodes of my lymphoma story, but in May 2021, I was done with chemo and I was waiting for my stem cell transplant, which was going to happen in June. Um, also in May 2021, I installed the Nest Hello doorbell on our front door, and I think this this is a great doorbell. I don't, I haven't produced, I think, a crank your damn jets to 11 video. I should, I should do it because I, I think it's, it's great. It's, it's better than other uh, Google products. 
Um, it has a very nice interface and part of the reason that I wanted to have that is, is for my wife because the other cameras that I have installed she doesn't access them usually it's usually it's me and I think the interface to to access them is really shitty um, it's complicated um, it's, it's hard to know what you're doing whereas the the Nest Hello Bell um, and I should tell you that this was the previous generation so the, what they have on the market right now is the generation after that I just bought it a little bit before they re released a new model um, but the previous generation was was great um, in terms of interface uh, I've seen my wife use it and she can use it very easily uh, and now every time somebody comes at the door if we have a delivery the bell even if they don't press the, the button the bell is going to um, notify us that uh, somebody's there uh, if my wife or I go by the, the front door it's going to tell that you know it's seen somebody it recognizes um, it triggers on motion pets all kinds of things and it's a very very nice uh, bell I did a kind of a temporary installation because I did not want to um, I didn't want to, to run power at that time inside the house so I, I ran I it, it is plugged inside the house and it's this low voltage so it is all per code and everything I didn't run high voltage there um, which I would not be allowed to do because I'm not an electrician um, so yeah, May 2021, the he Nest Hello Bell, uh, yeah, we're hap very happy with it. Uh, in September 2021, uh, September 2021, by that time I had the stem cell transplant, so I was recovering from the transplant. Uh, I installed a new battery on the UTV because we had the original battery on our UTV and that battery was maybe five years old. Uh, and it was time to replace it with a new battery. Um, I've tried to be kind to it, but I was not always very kind to it. There's been times where it, I, it stayed uh, unplugged for too long. Uh, so I replaced it with a new battery. And again, you know, you have to deal with going to the store and making sure that you don't catch COVID while you're doing that. Uh, but it worked pretty well. Um, What I didn't do, I should mention a few things I didn't do on, on the UTV. Well, on the UTV, I pretty much did everything I needed to do. But for, for the cars, there are a few things I didn't do was changing the oil, for instance, or changing the tires. Anything that required me to be in a kind of uncomfortable position for a while, I just didn't want to do it because I have to tell you that at some point when I was getting down on my knees, and I had, sometimes I had to do that inside the house, like if I wanted to access the safe in our house, um, it's on the ground. So I had to get on my knees and, and punch the code and do what I needed to do and then get back up. And there were times when, when I wanted to get on my knees, I had to think about it. How am I going to come back up and, and so on and so forth. So there are things I didn't do on the car, like changing the oil. I didn't want to get under the car and then have to get up from there um are changing the wheels we got some new wheels for the truck and i didn't want to do it myself because i i thought i was not in a good shape at the time to do that um so i replaced the battery in the utv in september 2021 in october 2021 i replaced the silverado tail lights uh that's our truck the silverado um and i've already had installed tail lights way back when uh, that were LED tail lights, but a manufacturing defect made it so that after so many years, um, the tail lights were not working anymore. There's just one place there was a wire that it kind of cut off, like right against the place where it it was going into the the piece that it was connecting to, and for me that's a manufacturing defect. So I had to replace those lights with new lights. Um, Same month in October 2021, I installed the dash cam on our Ionic. Um, 
and it took a whole day to do that. It was not particularly hard because I've installed a radio before in the in the previous car we had, um, which was ver very hard and took quite a while, especially um, to get the uh, on the on the back door the door of the trunk there to go from the top of the door of the trunk to the bottom of the door of the trunk took four hours on the previous car on the new car it was much easier to run the cables um, but I was tired anyway because I was recovering for some salt transplant so I was very tired at the end of that day um, And um, unfortunately, I did total that car. <laughs> uh, it's not related at all to the lymphoma. It's just that the one day I I did something uh, stupid, and we don't have that car anymore. And now we're waiting until spring at least uh, to get a new vehicle because right now, the the car market in the U.S. is is upside down still. Um, we went to one dealer, and the guy was laughing in our face. So, I decided not to waste our time or their time if they want if they have people coming in and they laugh in their face and those people still want to buy the cars well okay there's nothing much we can do about that but i don't want to waste anybody's time my time or their time so when a guy left in our face i decided just to leave the dealer uh, and come back home and we're gonna regroup in spring and in the meantime i have a plenty of time to research cars and um, and, and so on and so forth and then we might go full electric the next time the last time we went plug-in hybrid but next time we might go full electric and for the odd uh, travel to Montreal for instance we might just rent a car to do that trip instead of um, having the plug-in hybrid um, and then in November 2021, I installed a connection on the UTV to to charge the battery. What I used to do before that is that every time I wanted to charge the battery on the UTV, and in winter it's important to keep it charged because the problem is that we probably use it every two weeks in winter, and two weeks is too long to not not being used. Um, so in winter, what I would do is I would take the seat off. I would have to remove the seat. Uh, and then bring the charger and put the alligator clips on the on the terminals and plug it in the wall and then I would be able to charge and that's what I find that and I found that annoying because every time I had to take the seat off and then when I wanted to use it I would have to put the seat back on then you don't need any tools to do that but it's annoying to have to take the seat off and put it back on and off and on and off and on so I found out actually that I already had all the parts in my house to do the work. I just needed to take the some terminals and plug them to the battery. And then there was a junction uh, that I could plug into the charger. Uh, and this is the, that's just what I did. Uh, and now when I want to charge it, I just need to plug the charger in the wall and plug the other end into the connection I have on the UTV and I don't have to remove any seats or have any any gutter clips that I need to put on or remo and remove uh, it's much faster so those are all the projects that I did while I was on the lymphoma uh, you know one thing that it does tell you is that you know if you have cancer um, you don't necessarily become unable to do anything you know there are things you can do you can still do um it will vary a lot by from person to person how they handle the chemo how they handle their treatment at which speed they can go back to to work um it's very individual but you can for some of us we can still you know uh, manage to to do work around the house Another thing that I did, which is not something uh, that was uh, like punctual, like I did this on that date, and yeah, I, I could probably have a list of things that, of actions that I committed, but it, it doesn't line itself to that. Is that what I did? Is that I simplified 
some of the stuff that my wife had to deal with like passwords uh, I think I mentioned in my and uh, my uh, Cranker Dam just to 11 on Bitwarden and that one of the reasons I'm using Bitwarden is that it makes things much easier for my wife before Bitwarden and before the lymphoma we were before Bitwarden also before Bitwarden we hate each had our own you know, password manager and they were not linked together and things you know if my wife needed to access some of my things she couldn't do it um, now with Bitwarden we have sh some accounts are shared like the Walmart account if we want to order groceries uh, either of us can do it uh, if, if the worst were to happen and I were to die she she has enough information in Bitwarden to know how to get to my passwords um, and I've also simplified our finances they're consolidated under one umbrella and I've simplified a bunch of stuff and I did redo my my will uh, my old will was completely was nonsense I, it still talked about my mother for instance who is no longer with us um, so and I cannot give money to my mother she's not here anymore <laughs> uh, so I had to redo that and I read uh, I probably refreshed also a bunch of other documents related to that that needed a little bit of updating but were nothing major so I did simplify some of the things we we do in the house uh, our life and also another thing that I did which is not housework but fin more financial work is that I, I, I reviewed our finances because right now I'm not working uh, you know for money and nobody gives me money I record videos uh, every day pretty much these days there are times when I don't record videos there was been a long period of time I recorded and I stopped recording and I'm recording it again uh, but we have to make do with our savings and my wife's retirement I don't have a retirement I was a contractor so I have a I have 401ks or a 401k well actually I have more than one I need to still consolidate some things but um, you know I have that uh, so we need to do with the money we have and one of the things that I did was to go over our finances and start cutting expenses that that were in my mind extravagant and one thing that I did was to eliminate um, cable television we were still getting cable television before I had the lymphoma and for a while while I had the lymphoma and then at some point I looked at the prices I talked to my wife and she was the one mainly um, you know like I need to be able to see local news and I found a solution for that um, and you know we're n nothing we do is, is pirated or anything it's all we're all doing on the up and up um, but we saved uh, quite a bit of money uh, by cutting cable TV so we still have the internet and we're still with Comcast for the internet but the TV is, is gone and we're saving a good 150 to 100 dollars a month uh, by doing that I got rid also of our landline uh, which we were keeping for old reasons that don't apply anymore um, so if somebody calls us on the landline today I'm going to get the call and I'm going to decide what to do with it um, I might transfer it to my wife or or not answer if I just don't know who it is um, but uh, yeah I got rid of the landline and I've got rid of a bunch of things that I thought were pointless in terms of subscription things like that so I've normalized or I've, I've normalized our uh, finances to help us uh, you know I think we're in good shape I could be retired uh, right now if I wanted to uh, what I would tell people is that I'm not looking for work at the moment uh, but if something comes up then you know I'll I'll listen and if it's interesting then maybe yeah I'll I'll take it 
but uh, there's no hurry at the moment uh, but all that required to you know normalize a bunch of, of finances and and also plan for a long from a long time ago out we you know we've not been uh, you know except for the cable I think we'll, the cable was a, a bit of uh, throwing money away except for the cable I, I think we've been pretty rational with our money so uh, we've been fine so anyway that's what I did uh, those are the projects that I did while I was having a lymphoma and I did also did a bunch of uh, programming projects uh, or projects that are more programming oriented like home automation we do have home automation in our house we can tell Google to turn off or on the lights and I did update the software and make changes um, to that thing to simplify some things again um, but I cannot point to a specific moment like oh on this day and this this I could research all my history but I think it would be too too much stuff um, so yeah those were the projects uh, that I did well uh, under the lymphoma um, I think you know if uh, unless uh, the lymphoma is whacking you uh, pretty hard uh, you can probably also do it and you have to be you have to be nice to yourself you know you cannot do everything all the time um, I need I needed one of the effects of the lymphoma is I needed to compose with that that you know if I'm having chemo the days of course I'm in the hospital I cannot do anything around the house um, but even after the if I, if I had the, the chemo then the days after probably I wouldn't be able to do anything around the house because I wouldn't have the energy to do anything and you have to be fine with that you have to be fine with with having the energy to do things and not having the energy to do things uh, so I don't have a formal lessons learned uh, section in this episode but and this would be one of the things that I learned that you know composing with the the unavailability sometimes of the energy that you would like to have to to do things uh, you if you don't do it today you're gonna do it tomorrow and I know some, sometimes people think in reverse it's like why delay to tomorrow what you can do today well when when you have cancer you have to think differently you have to be kind to yourself and allow yourself to say well today I just don't feel like it and I'm going to take three naps and, and it's just gonna be that way uh, for today um, so I think that's enough on, on about my uh, projects um, so uh, with this I'll say goodbye and uh, see you in another episode